Hey everyone, Tony Walsh here. Welcome back to the channel and another edition of Wednesday in the Word. Now, the the past week, uh, actually the past week and a half, two weeks, has been tough for milita military families uh, because of the, some unfortunate deaths to our soldiers and, and Navy SEALs. <clears throat> and most of you know our son Andrew is uh, serving and he's actually deployed to the Middle East. Uh, of course, in this past weekend, uh, three army soldiers were killed, and I think it's up to 34 that were wounded. Uh, now, Andrew wasn't directly involved in, in that attack, but unfortunately, a young lady from Waycross was. Now, we only live a couple of miles from Waycross, so, you know, that does uh, hit sort of home when someone that close in... <clears throat> Excuse me, and she's only a year older than Andrew. I think she's 23, Andrew's 22, Andrew's fixing to be 22. You know, so it hits really close to home when uh, so someone passes away that's, you know, actually over in the same area that, you know, your son's at. So we just want to pray for all those families. And normally I wear red on Fridays uh, for my Farm Truck Friday videos and my Friday in period because... To me, red stands for remember everyone deployed. So I'm wearing it on Wednesday, uh, or well, that's when I'm posting this video, it's on Wednesday, because we need to remember everyone deployed, regardless of your politics, regardless of how you feel about the wars, the conflicts, the police actions, whatever you want to call it, regardless of how you feel about those, it has nothing to do with our individual soldiers. Uh, we need to support them, you know, no matter what. Uh, yes, they made a decision to join. Uh, but still, you know, we, we need to support them, you know. And, and that's really what I want to talk about is is these untimely deaths. In, in most of these, and I have not looked at the ages of all these people, so I just know the young, the young girl is 23. The others, I have no clue. I've read the articles, but I didn't write them down to make notes. <clears throat> but it's during times like this that people often ask the question, why does God let bad things happen to, to good people? You know, and it's just, you know, we're humans. We, you know, we're always going to ask why, even though we all, you know, as Christians, we trust God in all, with all our heart. You know, we trust him with all of our minds and, and all that. But still, we just ask the question, you know, just because at the time we're just we're hurting. You know, and I don't pretend to know why God does what he does. I mean, I, I can't outthink him, and, and I'm pretty sure you can't outthink him either. So, we, you know, we don't even need to try that. But, you know, uh, I just want to share some reasons today on why I think some bad bad things happen to good people. Uh, and the first one is, is this, that... That bad things happen just because we live in a fallen world. Uh, the, the world we live in is not perfect. Uh, it was only perfect in the Garden of Eden, which at that time was a paradise. But the problem was man and woman lived in the garden. And at that time there was no pain, there was no suffering, there was no heartache, and actually there was even no death. But once Adam and Eve sinned, and because of their sin, the whole world became cursed. Uh, bad things entered uh, into time. For each and every one of us, one day we're going to die. We have a birth date and we have a death date. And in between those two are a dashed line. So it's how we live that dashed line that determines where we spend eternity. The deaths that we have waiting for us one day. Uh, you know, there's loneliness, there's sickness, there's pain, and there's disease that we endure today. And it all comes down to man's sin, or man and woman's sin. So again, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, I'm in healthcare, so so we hear a lot of families all the time say, well, how could a loving God let people get sick? How could a loving God let somebody get cancer, uh, let somebody get, you know, have a stroke, let somebody, you know, have Alzheimer's, you know, a lot of this was during COVID. How could people die? And I've lost family members, lost a sister-in-law to, to COVID, uh, you know, and it hurt. 
uh, especially me being in healthcare, it really hurt to just see that struggle uh, for a week, week and a half, whatever it was, and then the hurt uh, that it imposed on, you know, her husband, which was my brother, you know, her, her kids, uh, you know, and, you know, we, we called her Mimi because she was everybody's Mimi, and, you know, just a, a loving woman, you know, so we just lash out, why does God let things happen? So think about it like this, if you buy a new car, and you go out and wreck that car, do you blame the manufacturer? It's not the manufacturer's fault you had it. Now, obviously, if, if something happened to the car, yeah, but, you know, most of the time, accidents, wrecks, are caused by human error. So when they're caused by human error, we don't blame it on the manufacturer. You know, we just suck it up and own up to it. Uh, because that car wreck, that car is broken, because of humans. See, the sickness and the disease that we endure today, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the droughts, the floods, the blizzards, the cold temperatures, all, all those things, the struggle at work, y'all know I've had those problems. Uh, they all are a result of man's sin. Man broke it woman broke it. Together, they broke the perfect system. And the world is no longer like God created it. It's not his fault. It's human's fault. So why do things, why do bad things happen to good people? It's the fallen world we live in. And it's the chaotic times that we are enduring now because of that. So my second reason, uh, if I didn't say, I think I got five. So, so my second reason that bad things happen to good people is because of the sins of other people. Uh, you know, there's just some bad people in the world that cause bad things to happen, and we get caught in the crossfire. A good example of this is, uh, <coughs> remember King David, and that King David committed adultery uh, with Uriah's wife, and, and she became pregnant because of that. So when David found out, King David, tried, he tried to cover his tracks and brought Uriah home, thinking that Uriah would come home, you know, sleep with his wife, and she would get pregnant, and Uriah would be none the wiser. But Uriah was so devoted that he wouldn't go home, he wouldn't sleep with his wife because his soldiers were still on the battleground. You know, so that's a commitment. So... What was King David to do? He had to go to plan B. Remember, just men do bad things. Humans do bad things. So King David had Uriah killed to cover his tracks. So bad things happen to good people because of other people. The sins of other people can still cause bad things to happen. It's just a set of circumstances. It is what it is. Uh, think about all the families that go without food because parents are addicted to gambling, you know, drugs, uh, spending money on so much other things. Uh, think of all the people that are killed on our highways because of drunk drivers. You know, it's not the innocent people's fault. It's just bad things happen because of the sins uh, of other folks. Uh, and it's all because we live in a fallen world. <clears throat> my, my third reason as to why bad things happen to good people is because sometimes it's to teach us a lesson. It, it's uh, sometimes a lesson that prepares us for something that's going to happen later in life. So we have to look at the big picture, uh, not just that moment in time. An example of this is uh, David and Goliath. Uh, you know, every day Goliath would come out there and just stand in front of the Israelites and just taunt them, just tease them, just heckle them. You know, challenging any of them to a fight. And every day the Israelites would tremble in fear. But then one day, a young boy came up and said, I'll fight the giant. Uh, of course, that young boy's name was David. And when King Saul told uh, David that he was too young, too inexperienced, David told him, I've already fought a lion. I've already fought a bear. God protected me then, and he'll protect me now. 
Now, what kind of faith does that show in uh, David? You know, you think about the, all the times that David was sitting out there watching the sheep, tending that flock, you know, and the wolves or the wild animals would come terrorize the, the sheep trying to, to get one to eat. How many times did David, you just think David sit there and just wondered to himself, God, why are you letting these things happen to my sheep? Why are you letting these things happen to me? Well, think about it this way. Maybe God was just preparing David with them small battles in order to get him ready for the big battle. You know, so, so we just have to think of sometimes bad things come our way. So they can teach us and prepare us for bigger things and better things later in life. Now, my fourth reason as to why bad things happen to good people is sometimes it's to bring glory to God. Uh, think about this story from, from the Bible. Remember how God and the devil were chatting and, and God was bragging on his servant Job. Uh, so the devil said, if you let me attack him, He'll turn his back on you. God said, no, he won't. Job is my trusted servant. He'll never turn his back on me. So God allowed bad things to happen to Job. Job, a perfectly innocent man. But he did it so that God would be glorified. And that's where we have to do. When bad things happen, we have to stead be steadfast in our faith and glorify him because it's not about us it's about him you know, it's sometimes it's easy for us in the world to think that the world revolves around us i i know when i was in my younger years and i was climbing up that ladder you know heck man i'm i'm, I'm it it's all about me i'm on the move well that didn't you know eventually somebody knocked me off that ladder uh you know so the world is not about each any of us none of us here are no better than the other because the world doesn't revolve around us. The world was made by God, not by us. See, we often believe that God should let us live pain-free lives, but that's not the case. We need to get over that kind of idea because God exists for us. God exists for us to bring glory to him, not ourselves. So my fifth and final reason that bad things happen to good people is to remind us that we're not home yet. Remember I said a birth date and a death date? Where there's also a birthplace, a death place, and then a final resting place, a final home place. And what I mean by that, think, think about this in, in John chapter 16, verse 33, when Jesus says, You will have suffering in, the, in this world. So think about this world here on this earth. Uh, there, there's so many times we get busy building houses, buying cars, doing this, doing that, taking care of our families, working our jobs, that we forget that all this is temporary. This is not our final home. You know, I, you know I've got a couple of videos out now where I talk about moving to, Jackie and I moving to our final home. And while well, that's it's our final home here on earth, but it's not our final home in eternity. Uh, so, so oftentimes, so what I mean by that is, so oftentimes we forget that Jesus is using our lives today to prepare us for a home in heaven. So we're not home yet. Because the, the final home, when we get there, there is no pain. There is no suffering. There's no separation. There's no more tears. The final home that we are headed to has streets of gold, has gates of jewels, and it has joy filling the air. So we're not home yet. There's a better place waiting for us. But in this world, while we're here, bad things are going to happen to good people. So saying all that, I need to ask a question. So when bad things happen to good people, 
How do good people, how do God's people respond to those bad things? Well, if we're true to our faith, true to our hearts, if we're true to God, then we respond to those bad things by trusting him. When that pain and that trouble come our way, the first thing we need to do is to remember that God is in control. We need to trust in him in whatever his plan is. You know, a few years back, I was going through some struggles with work. I was miserable and everything else. But one day, that door opened. God opened that door, and as I've said in a couple of videos and all that, I have been the happiest I have been at work in probably 40 years. You know, some bad things happened along the way, but I, you know, I trusted in him. There were times, you know, that I was frustrated with myself. I wasn't blaming him for it. But finally, you know, when that door opened, you know, I just said to myself, well, you know what? He's in control. I needed to quit worrying about things and just let him take control. So this video is getting long. It's a 16 minutes, so so I need to hurry up. So uh, we just remember that need to remember that God loves us. In the midst of all of our trials, all of our tribulations, in the midst of all of our struggles, in the middle of our pain, we just need to remember that something better is coming. God loves each and every one of us. So when bad things happen, trust in Him. Because God has a plan for each and every one of us. Y'all take care and God bless.